Welcome to the Mentally Strong Podcast. I'm Colm Sutherland. Join me on my journey as I explore and discover all there is to know about living well with multiple sclerosis. I'm a normal guy who was recently diagnosed and started treatment. I will share with you my conversations with others who are living with this chronic condition and with professionals who provide resources and advice. My hope is that you gain inspiration and ideas to improve your life. Welcome back to the Mentally Strong Podcast. For today's episode, I had a lot of trouble coming up with an introduction worthy of my guest story. Today, Tanya will share her incredible story with you. She believes in thriving over surviving, and you will gain a new appreciation for how resilient human beings can be. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be on here. When I read your story, and I was trying to come up with this fancy nice intro i'm like i don't have the words so we'll just let you tell your story and i think the listeners will get it by the time we're all said and done so i'm sure they will yeah i think so so are you from ottawa no i'm originally born and raised in montreal okay and Mm -hmm. what brought you to ottawa um my husband for work i guess i'll let you start the story where you want to start the story. Sure, sure. In the MS community, I've sort of come up with a label magically special because I also have a nickname that started with me since I was much younger, uh, Dream. So I call myself also that is so magically special unicorn and MS kind of goes together because I love unicorns. And, um, Well, my story is quite long, but the sum the story is, um, I know I've definitely had issues since the age of probably 15, and um, I'm currently 48 now. And I remember at 26 feeling tired and hot flashes after a shower. I had just had my daughter. My daughter is my second child. Um, at 32, I do remember also my hands seizing up and I was doing laundry and I couldn't let go of the laundry basket and I had to pry my fingers off. Um, I kind of pushed it aside because my son always had uh, mental health issues. One of the other reasons we moved from Montreal to, uh, Ontario. Um, so if we fast forward to 2019, when I was 44, I, you know, we had to admit our son into the hospital the first time and uh, for suicidal tendencies. And I remember having such bad headaches, I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. And I also remember occasionally having blurred vision and uh, standing issues and getting tired fast. And when I did go see anybody uh, over the years, it was I was either told it was migraines uh, you have kids, you're female. Um, so I had my first MRI in June of 2021. And I had that MRI because when I went to go see uh, my eye doctor for an emergency visit, because I was having trouble seeing out of my left eye, uh, he thought it was allergy. So he told me to come back in a couple of days. When I came back in a couple of days, I could no longer see out of my left eye at all. So he immediately called the Eye Institute with me sitting there with my husband and they saw me within 24 hours. Within those 24 hours, my son had a major psychosis and we had the police come several times. The last time we had them take him away. So this was like 3 a.m. in the morning. At 8 a.m. in the morning, I had an appointment with the Eye Institute Um Meanwhile, I'm sitting with the eye specialist at the eye institute while my husband gets a call from upstairs at the hospital from the psychiatrist telling us what she's uh, so far has talked to, tried to talk to my son and they're regu- trying to regulate some meds. And at the same time, the eye doctor is telling me, has anybody ever spoken to you about MS? And I said, no, but because I used to work in Montreal in the hospital as a social worker, I had some clue that there was something wrong from the age of definitely 30, 32. So we fast forward to my first MRI. My first MRI, which was at the Montfort Hospital, uh, in the middle of the night, and I get I get the MRI on a Friday. And Sunday morning at 8 a.m., 
I remember clearly my family doctor calling me and telling me, by the way, uh, substantially, we found a brain tumor. And he's like, nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll meet with the specialist for that, uh, as well as the MS specialist, and we'll go from there. So how far or what was the time frame there from that first deployment to the phone call on the Sunday morning? Uh, so when I first saw the eye doctor, it was in May and then it moved over a week or two. And then 24 hours later, I was seen at the eye Institute. And then about a month and a half later during lockdown of COVID, uh, I, I had my first MRI and then in July, I saw the neurosurgeon of uh, the Ottawa hospital. So it was very um, fast. The civic canvas. Yeah. Um, and then I saw in August of 2021, I saw the MS specialist, um, the head of the MS clinic in Ottawa, Dr. Freeman. And all I remember is my husband saying, so is it MS? And he just points at the brain tumor on the screen and says, if I don't know what M this, if I don't know what MS is, I shouldn't be doing this. So it is a rare form of MS, and it the the type of brain tumor I had was called menganoma, and it was non-cancerous, but it was still a tumor. And in order for me to continue with with him, we needed to get that out first, and then we would talk more. So I kind of put off having the spinal tap. I did everything else but the spinal tap because like, it's not that I, I was fearful. I just, in my brain, I wanted to get the brain surgery done over because I know it'd be six to eight hours. And it was my first surgery I've ever had in my life. And so, yeah, I, I just decided to jump all the way. Callum, that's just the way I am currently. <laughs> so November 3rd of 2021, I had brain surgery. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm, I'm thinking back to where you said the spinal tap. I was petrified. I had mine done. I I remember getting epidurals with my kids and I was like, I don't really want to do this. I don't really want to do this. And looking back now, I should have got it done before brain surgery just because I had a lot, a lot less spinal fluid at that point after because okay. you lose a lot when you have brain surgery. So, but yeah, it, it's, I have to say the doctor that did mine, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, he was amazing. And he really tried and I had to do it sitting up. So he had several times and I don't want to scare anybody on here. But like, he was really, really good and really patient. And I'm going to tell everybody if you ever have to have one done, drink lots of water the day before lots of water the day of and then after you're done, drink a small coffee. That's what I was told by all my nurse friends. And they were like, just do it. And it worked. So yeah. mine went as well as it could have. Everything I was figured smooth. if I could do brain surgery <laughs> and recover from that, I can do anything. I'm a superstar now. I'm a bad. That, that's that's so fair. Like, <laughs> that's more than yeah. fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a comparison. But, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have to say the brain tumor was, I know it was an accidental find, but that was, that was scary. And uh, it is also a rare form of MS called tumor active MS, which can either be brain tumor or the different type of lesions. They're wider. Um, I have regular lesions. So mine switches into relapsing remitting now that I don't have the brain tumor. Um, so the tumor was caused by MS? Yes, the tumor and MS are connected. Yeah. I learned something new today. Yeah, because that's why I said my neurologist, my MS neurologist, he pointed at my screen and said, if this is not MS, I don't know what is. His exact words, and he'll never forget me. You seem memorable just in the short time I've known you, so that doesn't surprise me. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to say that... Uh, I don't want to, you know, scare anybody else out there that has a mass. It is very, very rare and it is very slow growing. And typically the brain tumors that can grow would have been found in any MRI you've had. So it's not, not to worry that there's going to be one growing there later on. It just, it, I won the worst lottery ever 
So yeah. And um, um, during all this time, um, my son was also labeled schizoaffective, which is schizophrenia, schizophrenia plus other stuff. He is now 24. Um, yeah, so I had an interesting time because when I was first being assessed and during lock, COVID lockdown, my mom who lives in Montreal also developed a really bad dementia. So my luckily my brother uh, still lives there and my sister-in-law and a couple months on the list, we finally got her into a subsidized home near my brother's and she's now in a home. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like losing everything all at the same time. Yeah. But on the positive note, if they would not have, fa if they would not have been looking for MS, they would have never found the brain tumor. I wouldn't be here talking to you today. So MS saved my life. And not so, many of us can say that. No, that's a very positive way to, to, to see it. Because um, you said it wasn't cancerous. So is it because the tumor would have kept growing and eventually hit something? or what Well, the tumor at this point had uh, pushed my whole right. It was on my right cerebellum, but it had pushed my whole right side of my brain into my frontal part of my head. And it had nowhere else to go. So it was starting to grow down my spine. So uh, you have a gland inside your head as well as one in your neck. The gland inside my head is squished. It's called an empty cella. And uh, I think it's starting to come back. Um, so that controls your hormones, your weight, all that stuff, right? Especially in females. and. Um, I've just been kind of like on the it's having brain surgery the and having a brain tumor and having a lot of lesions on my cerebellum they did warn me that it would excel my MS for a couple years by getting rid of the tumor by getting rid of the tumor yeah but I had no choice but to get rid of the tumor because I was even having trouble swallowing okay how is the MS affecting you today um, well, I'm not the same person as I was before. Uh, it's a day by day event, just like everybody else with MS. The only difference is, is I have a lot of tightness and I have a lot of brain swelling still. And that's normal. Um, it takes years for your brain normally to settle uh, without any kind of chronic illness or anything. Um, having MS because it's inflammatory um it just adds to more of my inflammation so even communicating with you right now i can feel it's not as bad as it used to be but i can feel my brain tight inside my skull and it's a weird feeling i know our brains do not have sensors but you can feel it against the the, the thing and it's just it's odd to explain and um it also affects the muscles in the back of my head like i don't have any more feeling in the back of my head yeah, I have more on my right than my left. Um, what else has happened with my MS? Uh, my walking is definitely different. I do use a cane now only because occasionally I, um, I get really, really bad vertigo. And it's not the regular kind of vertigo. There are two kinds of vertigo. And it's the kind of vertigo that happens when you have uh, MS or a brain tumor on your cerebellum. Even if it's gone, it's still the damage is still there, right? Yeah. Um, so until recently, it was so bad that even looking at this computer screen, everything around would be just so spinning, right? Um, I do have the legs that give out sometimes too, so it's just for my safety, like I wouldn't want to fall. So, and uh, I got to try an A linker on the weekend, and I'm definitely going to see about crowd. Fun crowdfunding with them to see if I can get one. What is Do you know what an A-linker is? No. A-linker is a type of bike that is not considered a mobile device yet in Canada, but they're working towards that. And it's three wheels and you just use your legs. And it's definitely a lot of people have said that it's helped keep their mobility. Okay. Um, so instead of a walker or a, a walking walker, it's... And I did tell them I'd come on and talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so honest. It's so bad. <laughs> but 
but they're not getting anything from it. It's just, I mean, I really want OHIP and anybody across Canada because it'll help people like us and other people with other chronic illnesses that affect their mobility, you know? And uh, we can talk more about an a linker later if you like. But um, yeah, it's really cute. It's a three, it's a, like a three cycle, but it, but you're not pedaling, you're using your feet, right? And okay. you can sit so you're not standing like a walker. You're always leaning over. And a cane, you're always using the one arm to hold you or the arm yeah. crutches, right? You, you're you sitting. So you don't feel like I'm always feeling like I'm drunk on a boat 24-7. So for me to give me that stability to feel like, you know, I'm part of society a little more than I have been. Based on what I'm hearing, it's affecting your day-to-day nonstop? Oh, nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. I can't, at the moment, I can't really work either. Um, I had to stop working in 2019 when our son got uh, suicidal. And I wasn't working for the government like most people in Ottawa or anything like that. I was actually selling hot dogs for a guy that fixed hot dogs in Ottawa. So You were so. doing what? <laughs> selling hot tubs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I might I edit, blow your I mind. Might I edit, no, I might edit this out because I heard hot dogs. That's why I was like, what? <laughs> it's okay. Hot tubs. Hot tubs, hot yeah, that's, dogs. You know, you, you can eat a hot dog in a hot tub. Yeah. I don't know where to <laughs> yeah, go from here on that one. Yeah, no, we're not. Although you just did. Anyway, so it's actually a great segue because... As you're listening to this story, and I'm having this thought, you can hear lots of laughter. Would you say your positive nature, is that something you grew up with? Or is that something that you've learned and adapted over the last few years because of your circumstance? I would say a combination of A and B. I've always been a very happy, smiley, giggly type of person. Um... And I think that having all this has made me see a different perspective on life for sure. Um, I mean, it first started with having a sick child and then it moved on to being sick myself. So, and admitting of being sick is what took me over 25 years to do. Considering the fact that I was told my brain tumor grew between when I was between the ages of 15 and 20. So I uh, definitely had symptoms a long time. And yes, the brain tumor is connected with the MS. The MS set off the brain tumor from what I'm understanding. So yeah, I'm just a happy-go-lucky. And it's I think it's why I got the nickname Dream years and years and years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this. I'm just curious because I, I have a son and I know how important mm-hmm. he is to me. What would do you think? Him being ill or you being ill changed your perspective more? It definitely changed my perspective on his anxiety, um, his dep- his depression, and sometimes his bipolar tendencies. Yeah, I definitely, definitely feel differently than probably my daughter and my husband about that. Right. Because I experience it myself. Which I think, you know, most of us with MS all experience it. I'm not as far along as a lot of people who have MS. So my symptoms are pretty mild so far. I have, if, if there's a good version, I have it. I don't like saying it that way, but it's true at this no. point. Yeah. Uh, the most challenging part by far is it is the mental part of it. And I'm not being funny or cute. It is why I call the podcast Mentally Strong, because it is the part that I find the most challenging, for sure. It Um, is. It takes double the amount of cognitive ability to do anything. It doesn't matter how smart you are. The focusing, the communication, the eye contact, everything regular. I call them normies. Take for granted. And I don't mean any offense to anybody out there. Um, We are not normies, right? Right. We are not the normal population and it's so hard. And I hear you because I also have that, uh, my brain slowly moving back while the stuffing they put inside my head 
slowly gets dissolved in my body. Right. And I'm slowly coming back to who made me mentally who I was before, but then I have that cognitive de deficit on top of that. So often I can't provide eye contact and provide you with who I am at the same time because my brain just, it can't do it because I will get the head pains or I will get the, the anxiety feeling or any of those above. Right. And I'm sure that's, you can understand or, or just reading something and you're like, you have to reread the same thing 20 times, even though you're understanding it. It's like, it's like you're reading it, but your brain just goes away. It takes a trip down the uh, the uh, roller coaster and comes back around. Except it's not a fun roller coaster. No, it's not. It's the kind that you're not strapped in, and there's no gravity. And <laughs> I also, in addition to that part of it, it's new to me. Is when I have a symptom of some sort, I I'm like, is it MS or is it just because? I did this or it's this. I'm just trying to pick and choose. And, and I know I've I find that, that very difficult, extremely difficult. And for me, like I have to always see my two things as, as one, right? right. Because I'm always questioning which did it, you yeah. know, and my physiotherapist, which I have to say, she is amazing. She's really new and she's a neural myofascial release uh, physiotherapist. And okay. Uh, sometimes I'm doubting things and I will show her where I'm having a pain. Like for example, last week uh, I started getting pain under my rib and it, it started happening near the end of a physio and she could, she could touch it because she also does myofascial release. So she was checking it out and she's like, that's spasticity. And I'm like, at first I thought I turned the wrong way or I moved mm -hmm. the wrong way or I did something. And then lo and behold, she answered my question. But she said to me, don't doubt yourself because you are a very confident person. You, you know inside your body whether it's something you did or something else, typically. You are the best person to ask about how you're doing and how your symptoms are. So Interesting. I could spend some time thinking about that. I'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome to, to message me. I, I, I am... As my friend Terry, which I'm calling out right now, will say, I am a bundle of answers. All right. <laughs> Everyone heard it. It's recorded. So I'm safe to do so. <laughs> so you said you have a positive nature, and that's obvious. How do you keep positive? Because even though we're hearing the giggles and everything else, there's going to be times when they're not giggles and they're probably willing to guess there's tears at times. So Absolutely. how do you stay positive or how do you bring yourself back to the positive? Maybe it's a better I let question. myself feel. If I need to feel that moment, I let myself feel. Unless I'm in the middle of something and it doesn't give me the opportunity to do that. Um, and then I let it, you know, let it out. Let it, let yourself feel. But then once I allow myself that, I only give myself so long to feel like that. After that, I'm like, that's it. It's time. I love music and I love singing. And uh, I used to play my guitar. I'm not as, I can't, my fingers are numb and I can't do it quite as well, but it's not taking me away from trying to dance and listen and try to sing. Um, and that is my, that's my outlet and going for walks, which is why I also want that little bike. <laughs> so I can go for walks <laughs> with the little bike. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I do, and it's newer to me and uh, my friend uh, Terry and I and another MS friend, we started playing on the PlayStation and we start playing video games at night. And it's kind of hit, like he calls it his therapy. And I have to say, I, I do appreciate him and I do appreciate him uh, appreciating me, you know, as well. And uh, it's almost like it's a brother I never had. Do you know? I love my brother, but I'm not close to him the way I am with him. And that's great. And he gets along with my husband and we all play video games and that's another outlet. Um, and it does help because you just, you know, a lot of people aren't into that. And I wasn't always into that, but you know, having some laughs and giggles, at something really silly, really, really helps not taking nothing so much to heart. Cause you, you start taking too much to heart and everything, everything becomes so difficult. Your life becomes such a challenge. 
So, and I also believe in pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. How am I putting you through the rigor, aren't I? It's all good. You drink from that pink fluffy unicorn bottle that you're drinking from, so it's totally okay. <laughs> and it's just water. I find it important to ask that question and hear that because we all need our outlets. And I, I would imagine there's someone out there that's looking for an outlet and maybe you just gave them a new idea. So um, I have my outlets and it, it's going to be different for everyone, but we need that outlet because you're right. Uh, it is heavy. <laughs> and it can't, if it you're, is. If, if, it, if you're going to deal on that and sit in that heaviness all the time, it's not going to be very fun. So, um, no, I'd rather not be Eeyore. And Eeyore, I mean, as much as he's cute and adorable, I do not want to be Eeyore. <laughs> Unicorns to Eeyore. Don't forget the rainbows. For everyone listening, she did warn me before we started. So what do you do to to take control or to gain back a sense of control when everyone knows this is largely uncontrollable? Well, I find get, putting out positives. And for me, giving, putting out positives is helping others similar like me or anybody who, especially running the MS groups for MS Canada. I mean, I really enjoy having somebody else smile and laugh with me and realize that, yes, it's heavy, but it doesn't have to be heavy all the time. And sorry, what was your question <laughs> We'll come back to that. I want you to, if you don't mind sharing a little bit more about the MS support group that you're involved in. Yes, I run the MS uh, Canada, which is used to be called, formerly known as MS Society of Canada, um, the, the Ottawa chapter. And um, I'm currently very much enjoying that and hoping to grow our group and hoping occasionally maybe to meet up with another group and because, you know, I do agree with a lot of my fr people who I've gotten close to with MS and we are a family and we are a family not chosen by, by blood, but by illness. And we need to all support each other in some format. Um, that's truly what I believe. And for me, putting those positives out there, it makes me feel fulfilled. and. Um, I believe that the positives come back to me, you know? If someone's listening who has MS and is considering or was looking for something like that and, and they're not sure why they would do it, what would you say to them? I would say go to MS Canada, go to the website, contact the navigator and see you know, what they have. If you are in the Ottawa area, I mean, they will uh, let me know. and. If there's anything else you're looking for, they're there to help us. And, you know, I run the group every third Thursday of the month, except for the summer. I only took it over last October, so I am still new at this. And, um, but yeah, like, there's tons, so much support out there, you know. Please get some support, even if you feel you don't want to. It's just sometimes it just... It helps to talk to somebody else who shares, even though we're, it's such a snowflake disease and we're all so different. Um, it just helps to listen and share. And sometimes just listening, just being there with amongst people. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, like, and I truly believe in, we you know, no advice, obviously, but um, I do believe in telling services. Uh, to me, services is a different form of, it's not really advice. It's helping others, you know, reach another potential that they may be feeling they're falling through. I think it's amazing that you're giving back this, this soon after everything that you've been through. I think that speaks to you volumes about you as a person. So I really hats off to you. That's, Thank you. That's really amazing. That means a lot. Yeah. It was coming as I'm sitting here listening to you. I'm like, well, this just happened to her, and she's going, and you're taking that turn, and you're doing that already. Uh, it speaks volumes of you. So you run into someone tomorrow, and it comes up, and they go, "I've just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis." What What would you say to them? I give them two choices. I was like, I'm like, are you? Do you feel you would like some support? If you do. 
you can con you can go to the website of MS Canada and talk to a navigator, or I can give you my email address, and you're more than welcome to email me. And and none of the above. I mean, it's in their hands, and they don't have to contact me. They're more than welcome to contact MS Canada. And uh, but my advice is, you know, get su get supports, you know, connect with people as soon as possible because it's so easy to go down this hole this it's a dark hole and having my son who has schizoaffective which is schizophrenia he's refused years and years and years of not having peer support and it's still a challenge so he doesn't see the value in it and i have to say i've always seen the value in it. i like i said i was a social worker in montreal and i was a social service worker and that is different and, you know, grassroots stuff. And even then I believed, you know, connecting people because that's, that's how our world should be. We are still animals, even though we're humans, but we still, we need that social connection. And it's hard to be social connected to people who aren't normal, like, like who aren't, who are normies, who aren't experiencing what we're experiencing, even if it's lighter, even if it's heavier. I mean, my MS friends range from, you know, very, very mobile and hiking to a quadriplegic. Right. So like, you know, it's really important. Check in on each other. You know, like I even started a WhatsApp group for anybody in Canada or anybody that has MS. I'm hoping for just do Canada, but, and anybody in there, you know, we can just chat and support each other. And it doesn't have to be on Zoom. It doesn't have to be in person. It just... Just somewhere to say, hey, you know, I did this today. This is how I'm feeling. And everybody can just send some hugs, you know, and just feeling like you're not alone, not isolated, because it's a very isolating disease. It certainly can be on the bad days, that's for sure. Yeah. Any last thoughts? Uh, not that I can think of. Nope. Besides get out there, you know, like you don't even have to leave your room. <laughs> yeah. Don't it, isolate yourself. Cause I know how easy that is to do. Yeah. When you feel like you're alone and it, the, the longer you stay there, the harder it is to, to go. And it, you just got to take the step. I think it's Bernie Brown that has the five second rule. It's like, if you think if you want to do something, do it within five seconds to make sure you do it. Otherwise, you're going to find a way to talk yourself out of it because human beings are really good at it. <laughs> we are. We are for sure. And I have to say, I really enjoyed getting to meet you. And I really enjoyed chatting. And I really appreciate being on here. Well, it's uh, my pleasure. Um, I think it's very brave of you to come out and share your story. The fact that you've started helping with the resource center as well in this shorter period of time is a i can't think of a better word than amazing and your positive spirit i said it at the start you give resilience a whole new meaning and <laughs> you really do it's if i had to try to come up with an intro i still couldn't do it but uh i love having you on and thank you so much thank you 